Hey, folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on the Hagenstead map. Let's get back to reliving the glory days. This is why I don't particularly care for this Salford plow. It takes so long to do anything with it. I haven't, like, made a mistake with this one. Have I, have, have I, am I supposed to unfold it or something? There's no unfolding, making wide or anything. No, there's no. I haven't missed anything on this, have I? No, I haven't. I was going to say, I, I, I haven't done something really daft, like uh, just forgotten to unfold it. But no, it is this painfully slow. It is just like this all the way through. It takes It just takes a long time. I used to do pretty much all of the widening of fields with... There was an Amazon six-furrow reversible plow. And it wasn't a trailed one. Because the next size up was a Lemkin plow. And I think that one was like seven furrows or something like that. Or it may have been a, a big Salford plow. Uh, but they were trailed plows, so you couldn't get them to go into straight lines very easily. At least I think they were. They definitely turned up in FS15. Whether they were in FS13 or not, I don't actually remember. Um, I do. The, the, I'm sure there was a trailed plow, but I didn't like it. It didn't work very well. You couldn't get straight edges with it at all. So I used to stick with an Amazon six furrow reversible plow, and that worked really well. It did take a little bit of time to go around and do the fields, but it still worked. It did what I needed it to do, and that's what's happening here. We're slowly chugging our way through. Now, as I've only got one tractor, I can't go and get another one and set that one cultivating up the potatoes that we've got there, which I would very much like to do. I would like to cultivate up those potatoes and get them out of the way, but that's not something we're going to be able to do at the moment. So we're going to have to just wait and do this. And these trees are starting to irritate me because they're, they're right in my way. They're, they're blocking my line of sight here. That's why I don't like trees. Real life, I, have, I grow trees wherever I can, but um, for purposes of gameplay, they are a very frustrating entity. It's all the leaves. If I could see through them, that would be a lot better. If I had, like, a mod that allowed me to just see through tree foliage... I know that you got the no camera collision, so the camera doesn't jump forward when you're going past the trees. And I appreciate that mod a lot. I use that mod all the time. That's like a as standard mod, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but it would be nice if we could perhaps have some sort of mod that when the camera goes between trees and the vehicle you're looking at, the trees disappear. So if I bring it over here, all those leaves will automatically just vanish from my screen. That's what I would like a mod to do. Is there any such mod that does that? Because the no camera collision one... That doesn't do that. You can go through solid objects and they disappear, but not through the trees. The trees stay exactly where they are. I'm nearly done. Right, we, we, we've, we've done the grass and the plow is quite narrow and I am overlapping quite a bit because I'm not using the GPS. So it's just reliant on me trying to do it by eye and I'm never quite sure whether I'm getting all of it. I tend to play... Like, I, I err on the side of caution when I'm creating a new field because I want to make sure that I get every single little spot. And because you've only got to do it once, that is worth just taking a little bit of time, even if I am overlapping by too much and I'm being too cautious. I still tend to do it that way because then you haven't got, like, any little spots left over that you haven't ploughed that you would then possibly have to go back at a later date and go and get. So let's swing out round like that, because I'm just not going to be able to get in between the trees otherwise. And then we'll go up here, and off we go, so long as I'm not lowering that plow down too early. See, right there, like the tra it feels like the tractor should be driving in the furrow, so it's leaning over to one side like that as I go through. Now, obviously, FS13, we didn't have any of this... Um, terrain sort of options like this, the, the bumpy terrain, anything like that, that the tractor just sat on top of the, the picture, and it was essentially a picture of ploughed land rather than ploughed land that made the tractor sort of bounce up and down, anything like that. Um, 
There was a few spots in some fields when you widened them that the machine that you like if you were drilling or combining it would come just about completely out of the ground across the entire thing but it would still harvest it would still plant and it does it the other way round now if you come out of the ground too much with anything it doesn't work on that particular spot you know the combine header will ground out or it will just miss the crop altogether and yes, it's a bit more realistic, but I kind of miss the good old days where you didn't have to worry about that. So long as the combine was somewhere near the crop, it would harvest it. That's all it needed to do. It just needed to sort of be in the rough vicinity of the crop and it would just carry on and do it. This is getting a little bit tedious, isn't it? I was, I was sort of thinking it was going to be a little bit more exciting than this just to start off with. We're... Um, we're a good episode in by this point, and all I've done so far is plow up this tiny, tiny little patch. This is why I don't like this Salford plow. I, mean, I suppose it's alright if I was to just leave it plowing in a field, but again, with FS13, I didn't bother with plowing. I didn't leave anything plowing. If This was the only time I used a plow, and other than that, I would just cultivate or direct seed. Um, I would work towards a direct seeder and then I'd do no ploughing at all. There'd be no ploughing done. I didn't bother with any kind of ploughing for realism or anything like that. I just didn't plough. Um, unless... could you, I, No, actually you could cultivate without having to plough, couldn't you? I think you, you could do that in the game. You could cultivate without having to plough, and so that's what I would do. If I wanted to do root crops or if I was going to do corn, um, I would do that with just the cultivator. I'd do, use the cultivator to do it. And to start with, our seed drill has got no option to go and um, do direct drilling. We've got, to, we've got to cultivate everything up first anyway. So the next job that we'll do is once we've done this bit of ploughing right here is we will go and put the plough away and then we'll go, we'll, we'll run back to the shop and we will get the um, cultivator. We'll bring that one up here. We've got one more pass after this one. Uh, we'll do the, we'll get the cultivator and we will cultivate in those potatoes. I don't want potatoes. I'm not growing those. Uh, sorry, Bowen. Bowen is a huge, huge... He's been a supporter of the channel for a long time. He is a huge potato fan. Um, and we are going to be doing a potato harvest. Um, I used to do, very occasionally, a root crop harvest. I would do a potato harvest every now and then, and I would do a sugar beet harvest every now and then. Oh, no! I went out just a tiny, tiny bit too far there on that bit, but it doesn't matter because I will eventually come back and we'll be widening this field further. Uh, we will get a little bit more, so just a tiny, tiny little smidgen on the edge there is absolutely fine. There, we'll go like that and then control Y so that we are... No, I don't need to control Y. Right, allow create field there. Right, so it's no longer able to create fields. We're done. We have finished the ploughing. We need to go and do the cultivating. I would do root crops very, very occasionally, and that's what I'm going to be doing. I will be doing a root crop harvest every uh, periodically. Um, might look at doing some sugar beet, but it's almost certainly going to be potatoes. Potatoes is the thing that we will concentrate on mostly because I've done sugar beet a bit in a few other um, videos, but I, I haven't really done much in way of potatoes. We'll go and put the plow back in here. One thing that we don't have in FS19 is the ability to turn off the... If I do that there, I'll take it out of the ground. We cannot turn off the damage done to the machinery because that wasn't something that was in FS13. You didn't have to have a workshop and constantly repair up your machinery. That was something that was introduced in FS15. Deterioration of machinery. I think there was actually a mod that did do it in 13. Correct. Don't, don't sort of question if, if you're absolutely certain that something I'm talking about is utter nonsense and I'm just spouting rubbish 
please get into the comment section and say, Frith, you are talking out of your posterior. That is not the case. It was like this. It was, you know, we, we did have machinery repair in FS13, or we, we didn't have this, and, and so on. And I will correct in future videos, right? I'm just trying to remember what we did. I didn't pay all that much attention to the, the finer details of the game and what was happening. I sort of, I, I just came along and I, I found this game and I tried it and thought this game is absolute rubbish. Why on earth would anyone play this? And then I deleted it off my computer and didn't think about it for three months. And then I seen that it was being advertised everywhere and it was actually getting some good reviews. So I put it back on my computer, the free demo, and tried it again. And, you know, sort of thinking, well, maybe I missed something the first time round. And I did because, well, I think what they'd done is they'd actually improved the tutorial a little bit because I couldn't figure out a lot of it to start with and it didn't, it, it sort of didn't flow very well. Um, but there were some changes and it, it seemed to just work quite naturally and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I played it. Like, I start, I was a big Warcraft fan at the time. I played a lot of World of Warcraft. And I started playing this game. And World of Warcraft took a back seat for three months. I just played this game exclusively for three months. And that was really saying something. Because I was a hardcore fanatic when it came to World of Warcraft um, back at the time. Uh, so for any game to be able to push Warcraft to a back seat for a while was quite remarkable um and so i played it until i got fed up with playing it and since then i've just sort of come back to it periodically whenever i sort of fancy another go with doing a bit of farming and well i, I did for a while and and then i started recording videos so now i play it quite a bit actually uh, I'm, i've been known to play this from from time to time these days so what we're going to do is we're going to run up and down this field with the cultivator. Now, I'm not sure if it's actually going to cultivate all of that bit over there. We've got one more. We, we got sort of a plow line up the side here. It, it drifted out the side. Don't really matter that it's got slightly wider there and it's not actually cultivating that. Honestly, I don't care. Um, we will let it go all the way up through here. I'm going to be doing this exactly how I used to do in FS13. So some things that I used to do, you'll probably think, uh, why on earth would I do that? That's sacrilegious. Um, I cannot believe that you would do such a thing, Frith. Um, yeah, that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Um, I'm not doing this for accuracy, realism, anything like that. I'm doing it just how I used to play a game. That's, that's literally what I'm doing. I'm just reliving how I used to play this game. And that's, that's the only point of this series. I would expand out fairly quickly and buy up as much land as I could. And every time I bought a new field, I would expand the field out to as, right to the out absolute limit that I could reach on the edges of the field. I would push to get as much of that new land as I possibly could. Now remember you couldn't delete trees and things like that. So these trees were there to stay. They were right in the way. And they were the bane of my existence. I hated the fact that there were trees there. They would they'd stick them on the corners and then you couldn't really expand the fields very much. Some of them you could get away with expanding the fields. Uh, but then you might have some other problems, like uh, the, the two long fields just up over the cliff up there. Um, these two here. There was a bit just there. And it there was a bit of a hill on there. Let's go and have a look in the landscaping. And see if we can see that. Oh, it's uh, this way. I'm going to go up here, and it's this long field here. So our tractor is working down here. We're working on here, and you buy up these fields here. So this one here, I would leave that one, and I would actually remove this track here, and that one I would actually plow up, and that would be part of the field. And then here, I would go right to the edges of the track. No further than that, but to the edges of the track. And then this side, this would all be, um, d the field would be deleted and it would just be then 
um, meadow grass. This side over here, you could push it over this way as much as you could, but if you went too close to this side, some machinery wouldn't work very well going against this bit, so you had to keep it back. I think it was the potato harvesters that struggled the most with it. Um, so I ended up having to like keep that back from this bit of a hill over here. And I always wished for something that would allow me to be able to alter it just a little bit. So I will be using the landscaping mod to try to adjust that just a tiny bit. Um, just so that I can actually fit the field of my dreams in there. And we'll be removing these trees. We'll go out over to there. But this road up through here, I use this one all the time. I used to use that because I would come up here and in round this side and then up through to... Or I th think I did. Didn't I? Pretty sure I did. Yes, I did. Because... And then I had that one going up. Maybe I... I No, I did keep that one. That's one that I kept. I may have actually gotten rid of that one and plowed over it so I didn't bother. You know, I don't remember. I don't actually remember. But looking at it here, this fit, we don't need that track coming around there. That is surplus to requirement. We could just have the track running in through here instead. That would be fine. Um, I might be using the AI vehicle extension in this series. So that I can have some uneven edges and fields. But I'm not quite sure about that because... I'm reliving my glory days, but I also would like to be able to just do a couple of the tweaks that we're now able to do. Things like that tree there and that one, it made, like, expanding this field out exceptionally difficult because you had these trees on the corners, which, you know, did make things rather tricky for you. This one over here, I would end up turning that into a bigger field and go across that track right there and it would just sort of the square on this side would be moved out as much as I could over to here and then that one would be moved out and joined in together so you'd sort of have um, a square with a dog leg kind of thing on it and I had those like you had quite a few of these odd shaped bits here and there in the fields and you just learned which way to when you were building up your fields and when you were starting to work your fields you just learned pretty quickly which way round to do those to start with your cultivating is coming along well now something that we did have in fs uh, in fs13 was we had three tractors so if i was doing a job like this i would get another tractor in one of the small tractors and i would be doing some work with that one as well and i think that we do actually need that so I'm going to go back over here. We won't worry about the combine for a minute, but we could do with another machine. I think we could do with another machine. So we actually, we want to go into the shop. Um, now that's 59,000 euros with that tractor. I haven't got a cheap tractor. Right, unfortunately, we don't have any cheap tractors available. We got the K7200, that's 98,000 euros. And if you look through these other ones, 100,000, these are the medium-sized ones. So there's nothing cheap. Like the small tractors you used to get were small, and these are the giant tractors. So we ain't getting anything from those. Um, and this this is like where it gets a little bit tricky. I've, uh, I've got miscellaneous. We, we've got a few cars. I mean, we could... Try one of these because they do have a hitch so they can drag some things around, but they're not gonna we're not gonna be able to do what we want to do with that. We did have a loan. There, there was at least you had a loan of at least a hundred thousand euros. But we don't need that, do we? No, we don't. What we need is we need to be able to sell some of the grain we've got. Now what I'd like to do, the cheapest tractor that I've got available is another Fiat. I could go for a Valtra A series there. It's only 100 horsepower. This one's 150. He's only got 25k as his top speed, whereas that one is 40k. It would be a lot better. That's 115. And he's 50. Good gravy. That one's 50k. 115 horsepower. Have we got a bigger option for the engine? 
Right, that's 93,000. We need almost 100,000 for this one, and that's a 150 horsepower tractor. It's got front weights, uh, uh, like front hydraulics that it can use, and it's got 50k as its gear. You know, it's got it's got a 50k box on it, which is so much faster than our little um, beastie that we've got at the moment. Because if we have a look at our actual money that we could go and get right now. Um, we're on standard economy, so we got nothing being offered at really good prices. I suppose 1700 is not too bad. Central grain elevator. I got 15,000 liters of beans right there that we could go and sell. And we got 887 there for the restaurant. Uh, 1500 on sunflowers. 750 on wheat. I don't know what good prices are. We got normal economy. We're using normal economy at the moment rather than easy. I mean, you, maybe we should use easy economy. Pretty sure I used to have it on easy economy. We're going to save the game there on easy economy. Let's have a look at the prices now. <laughs> that's more like it. That's what I, that's that's more like I remember. Because I don't like, I don't want to be dragging this out too long. I want to be able to go and buy new stuff. We'll keep this on the easy economy setting. I think that's that's a much better option for us. And if if so, you go into here and no, it was in the next one, wasn't it? It was in here. Easy economy affects buying and selling, and the revenue of contracts is based on this factor as well. Now, we didn't really have contracts other than going and doing a little bit of mowing. And you used to have to buy the mowers yourself. So we won't be doing contracts, I don't think. Although, wasn't there some delivery ones as well? I don't remember if there were delivery ones or not. But we can... I'm certain that we still have a limit of borrowing 100,000. So I'm going to say that we can borrow 100,000... If it's not 100,000, if it's got to be more than that or less than that, then we will alter. But I'm going to go for 80 grand at the moment. So we've got 105,000 euros. Right. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to want more than that. There, 125,000 because the GPS mod is one that I want to use. So we'll go here with the Fent. And we will go with the bigger engine on this one. So it's 93,000. And then the GPS is another 15,000 on top of that. But we'll want that for making our fields bigger. So it's quite an important one to go and get. So we're going to buy that right there. 150 horsepower tractor, which is the same as the one we're using, incidentally. Um, but now we've got more tractor there. Right. That's a good start. That is a good start. We've gone and made our first decent purchase. We've got our little trailer over here. This one, I don't remember how many litres of literage this one takes how much do you take 10,750 I think that's all right for a minute we'll stick with this trailer we won't worry about going for a bigger trailer now of course the other thing is do I want to go and start selling some stuff already or do I want to immediately get... St I think we want to get started with the planting first. And then we will worry about the selling of things afterwards. So I'm going to leave the trailer here. And I'm going to hitch on the Amazon seed drill. And I'm going to hitch on the fertilizer spreader. Bring that one on there. Now, we go and have a look in here. We don't need to worry about weeds on these fields. Weeds is not an issue. And we go here again. So, weed is not in here. It says needs plowing. Sure why it's got needs plowing. I've removed the requirement for needs plowing. And I removed the requirement for needs lime as well. So despite it saying that, it shouldn't actually need it at all. Now, fertilizing, we will have to do two lots of fertilizer rather than just one. Um, fertilizer is now different. It used to be in the game when you were doing fertilizer. I think there was only one round of fertilizer that was needed. 
It may have been two, but you could go and put them on one after the other. You could put a round of fertilizer on. You could immediately go and put a second round of fertilizer on if that's what you wanted to do. And there was no penalties for it, right? You could just put the fertilizer on, job done. And nice, quick, easy, and completely painless. So you didn't have to concern yourself with that in the slightest. But now you're not able to do that. We'll lower that one down there and we'll leave that fertilizer spinner there. And then this Amazon seed drill, we're going to lower that one down. We're going to take that one off. Oops. We'll spin round. So we've, if we are limited to 100,000 euros on loan and that is it, then we have gone and made all of the purchases that we can just about for now with our 100,000. I did say that I was going to leave it, but um, already I've gotten bored with waiting for the other one, so we're going to speed it up and just be prepared for a lot of that because um, I'm not about to just sit here staring at it for ages, twiddling my thumbs, doing nothing. That is one thing that I used to do. It was very important to me when I played this game that I didn't get really bored. So I, I didn't used to do anything that I found really dull. Um, I would speed things up i would get mods with increased capacity things like that didn't often increase harvesting speeds but i did increase capacities by a long way so combines would be running around with 100,000 liter tanks trailers and overloaders like i'd have an overloader that would go along with a 300,000 liter capacity excuse me and i would have a um, road train that would be going along with a 2 million litre capacity that would take all of the grain that I was pulling off the combines. And I would keep me through, I think I had three combines, I'd keep them running continuously with my massive great big volume trailers that I used to use running up and down. And I didn't think that was playing unrealistically because what I was essentially doing was... You are going to keep going there, aren't you? What I was essentially doing was I wasn't... I didn't feel that I was cheating in any way. I was still simulating the combine working the field. I was still simulating me overloading from the combine into the road train. And then me driving the road train from the combine back to the yard. I... I'm talking about after I had bought every single available field on the map and working my way through it there. Right, I don't quite know why you're doing that. You're going to go right back to that tree that you stopped by and you're going to turn around there and you're going to keep going. Don't really know why you would feel the need to do that. It's just going to annoy me and yeah, you, you, you don't need to do that. So you start from here and keep going. So you're going to go and plant wheat in there. I did use to start off by getting my, like, filling up the seed and that myself. But I would very quickly change it so that hired help was automatically buying seed and fertilizer. So that I didn't have to go running back to the yard every time to refill. Because do it, having to do that just irritated me. Um, I didn't like bothering with that. I knew what that was like, having to go back to the yard and refill the fertilizer. So once I've done it once, I didn't feel the need to do it anymore. I've simulated doing it. I can now just let. I can now get on and get the the fields done and and planted. So I would have the hired help buy them. And it was much the same with the really increased volumes. And if I ever mentioned increased volumes, and I also found that if someone else ever mentioned increasing volumes, there were quite a few vocal people in the community at the time that would get really passionately angry about the suggestion that someone would go and do that because it was cheating. And they shouldn't be allowed to play the game because it was cheating. And it goes right back to, I'm playing a single player game. There are no... I think we've relived enough glory days just for a moment. We're going to take a breather. We're going to have a little bite to eat. 
And then we can get back to it nice and refreshed and relive a few more glory days. There should be some names coming up right now that you can have a look at. It's names of people who are in the Great Book of Names, people who have supported this channel, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.